to my shot, but it was only a party. Too much adrenaline, not enough dream. I hit the finish line before I started. Got all messed up inside, it's pretty lame. But even though I said I'm never coming back, I drove a super hit and ride back in. I know it's not like me, you can disagree, but I can nail this. Nothing's gonna stop me. Stop me now. Nothing's gonna stop me. This is the price that we have to pay. Pain is temporary, but pride is forever. Another winter's day dawns, crisp and cloudless over the sleepy town of Outsurn, situated in the Little Karoo, a semi-desert region in southern South Africa. With the sun still lingering below the horizon, a group of 170 South African National Defence Force soldiers are forming up on an unpleasantly chilly parade ground. They're about to embark on a life-changing quest. The quest for the Maroon Beret. For the next 72 hours, these men and women will be pushed beyond their limits in a seemingly endless series of physical and mental tests as they battle their way through the SANDF's grueling Basic Parachute Selection Learning Program. The purpose of the Basic Parachute Selection Learning Program, which is presented here at the South African Army Infantry School, is to select new recruits for the Basic Static Line Parachute Jump Learning Program, which is presented at the South African Army Formation's esteemed 44 Parachute Regiment. Due to the demanding nature of their role on the battlefield, the SANDF's parachute infantiers need to be highly skilled and extremely fit. The parachute infantry is responsible for transporting and dispatching personnel and equipment by means of aircraft in support of objectives on the battlefield. Once on the ground, they perform a variety of specialist tasks, including medical evacuation, air assault and air supply. This selection process is the first step towards becoming a respected paratrooper, one worthy of wearing the famed Maroon Beret. Having passed all their entry tests for the selection program, each student is now issued a red numbered sleeve, which they must wear throughout the entire selection process. This red wristband is a symbol of their perseverance. To lose it would mean to lose everything. Should a student fail certain crucial tests, his or her wristband will be taken away and along with it, the prospect of one day wearing the renowned Maroon Beret. During military training, battle efficiency tests are used to measure a soldier's physical standard, comprising speed and power tests, Battle efficiency tests also act as entry tests for the main selection phase. For this group of students who are by now straining at the leash, the program finally kicks off with a 3.2 kilometer run. Wearing full battle dress, they need to cover this distance in 18 minutes. The harsh Little Karoo landscape has over the years proven to be the perfect environment for endurance testing, especially in winter, when temperatures fluctuate between extremes within a matter of hours. The days are normally scorchers, and at night, the temperature here dips considerably. At this juncture, the human body is always in some state of adaptation. During the quest for the Maroon Beret, Ladies won't be receiving any special treatment, since the men and women who finally earn their wings need to be equally tough. And so far, the instructors are not particularly impressed by their performances. Join your friend, join your friend. Yo, chief. Remember. One, four, two. One, one, four. Go, boy. I'm proud of you. 
The first power test awaiting the group of students is aptly named The Wall. For over the years, it has literally stopped thousands of hopeful students dead in their tracks. At 1.8 meters high with a smooth surface in front and no holding place on top, it is quite daunting, especially if you're a tad on the short side. The wall exercise is all about upper body strength. If this isn't your forte, you're not left with many options. Wearing full battle dress, the students have a 12-meter distance to run and build up momentum. Ample time if you know what you're doing. Technique, however, remains a matter of personal choice and the styles vary greatly from student to student. Some seem unsure of their ability to succeed, but in the end, they do. Others only just make it on account of not giving in to muscle fatigue. Then you get those students who just knew that they would make it. And then those who probably knew they wouldn't. Each student must climb to the roof of the hangar using a 5 cm thick, 50 m long rope that is hanging about 30 cm above the floor. The students must use their hands, legs and feet to climb all the way to the top before sliding down the rope and since everybody gets just one chance, they need to get it right the first time. Distance is 175 meters. You've got 75 seconds. You will move along this road. They will be instructed at the turning point. You will turn around and you will come back. There will be four pairs at the time running. The line is marked on the road. As soon as you get the command fall in, you will fall in with your partner. Ready? You will stand like this. Pick up. Now pick him up. One, two, three, four, five. Go! And then you will run. Okay, sit down. You have to do 40 push-ups without breaking your rhythm. There's a small bar that you will place between your thumb and your pointing finger that will make everyone the same shoulder width apart to do the push-up. You see, his body is straight. When he will do the push-up, his elbows will be to the outside. When he will go down, when he will come up, he will lock his elbow. That is one push-up. Right. Go. One. That is one push-up. Do you understand? You do not break your rhythm. You must touch the first of the instructor. Then you will count. Same drill. Two warnings. Third time, stand back. Do you understand? Any questions? Right, stand up. During their next exercise, the students must complete 40 shuttle runs in a time frame of 95 seconds. To execute this exercise correctly, they need to run between two painted lines that are 6.15 meters apart. To complete one shuttle run, 
they must touch the ground with both hands on the outside of each line. Only on the 40th run may the student's body cross the line. To perform the perfect sit-up, students must lay flat on their backs with their knees bent, their heels flat on the ground and their hands locked behind their heads. A sit-up is completed when any elbow touches any knee and the shoulders touch the ground thereafter. Fellow students may hold the students' feet down but are not allowed to give them any further assistance. This obstacle course, consisting of seven different obstacles, also serves as an eliminating exercise. And if a student is unable to cross any of these obstacles, he or she will be immediately withdrawn from the selection program. The instructors will therefore be keeping a close eye on all the students throughout the exercise while they do individual evaluation. During the night navigation exercise, students need to cross several obstacles spread along a distance of between 1 to 12 kilometers. As a surprise exercise, groups of three students must carry a pole for approximately one kilometer. Teams are dealt with uniformly in terms of leadership and experience. Over the vast open plains of the Little Karoo, the second day of the parachute selection learning program has just dawned. Far off in the distance, the first challenge for the day awaits the group of worn-out students, namely a 4.6 kilometer stretch of dirt road. They need to cover this distance in less than 40 minutes, wearing full battle dress and carrying an 84 mm ammunition container. The aim of this exercise is to test the students' general endurance and perseverance. You lift up the, the canister here, you run, you don't walk. Not even a second walking, running all the way up until you reach the finishing point. I can't go anymore. I'm tired, really tired. But okay, it's fine. It's not the end of the world. I can come try again sometime. Yeah. While others still have a long walk ahead of them, the first student to make it in time arrives at the finishing line. <laughs> The aim of the boxing exercise is to test the general aggressiveness of each student. 
This exercise also affords students the opportunity to rest and prepare for their next challenge. Don't kick on the box. Diving, you are allowed. Don't hold, don't kick. When someone is on the ground already, don't hit him. Wait for him to stand up again. Is that clear? But be careful. Don't like to be on your back too much without a punch. When you say a hard part is coming to you, you just go down. I will give him permission to hammer you on the ground. The purpose of subjecting students to battle situation exercises is to test their perseverance and teamwork under unfavorable conditions. The aim is to create an uncomfortable situation, one that soldiers can normally expect during a battle scenario and that will last throughout the night. During this selection program, soldiers will have to dig trenches. Students who give their cooperation will be favored by being given extra sleeping time, whereas those who don't will only receive two hours of sleep. During this battle situation exercise, members can withdraw upon own request or be withdrawn if they fail to contribute sufficiently. Up and down, up and down, up and down. The enemy is coming. The expressions on their faces speak volumes about how exhausted these students are after two wearisome days and two nights of little to no sleep. While some may still have a smile ready, others don't seem to think there's much left to smile about.
Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, just a Can I get a coffee with this movie? From Tuesday until now. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> then you fail. <laughs> it's only hours now left. We left with hours. But for an unfortunate few, fate doesn't have even a single second to spare. We want the number. We want the number. We want the number. We We don't compromise even one second. It's messed up. Got another word for it, but I don't think it will be suitable. You think it's fair? By one second. In the heat of the afternoon on the third day of the quest for the Maroon Beret, the remaining students embark on a 15-kilometer route march. They must complete this walk in a time of 2 hours and 45 minutes, while carrying an additional load of 26 kilograms worth of equipment with them. This time of day, the little Karoo is at its harshest, with a rocky terrain underfoot and the sun burning mercilessly upon one's back. Even if they were allowed to do so, these students wouldn't converse with one another. They simply don't have the energy left to waste on anything else but focusing on taking the next step on this seemingly never-ending stretch of dirt road. And then, at long last, almost three hours and a few blisters later, the students reach the finishing line. There is now only one final back-breaking exercise standing between them and ultimate victory. But before they can embark on this final long walk to glory, they need to have their blisters taken care of. You may carry the stature only by hand. Four people at a time. Nothing else. Three will be roaming. Your stature will drop down to five. Then leave it up to the instructor. They will give you something else. Okay. Do you understand? I cannot hear you. Do you understand? Yes, Major. Okay, we will see. Two hours, 15 minutes. Distance, 12 kilometers. This is a cut-off exercise. Ready? Stay on the road. Go. With the stretcher weighing in at a whopping 75 kilograms, this final battle situation exercise will be an equalizer. The ultimate test for endurance and teamwork, this is what being caught in the middle of a battle is all about. Pushing oneself beyond your limits may very well mean the difference between life and death. As if the physical challenges are not hard enough to deal with, these men are also constantly being challenged on a psychological level. Drop it down! Drop it! We are standing! We are standing! Put it down so that I can get my numbers! Three quarters of the way and the men are spent. Worn down to the bone by the long hours of being sleep deprived and pushed to their physical and mental limits, they are struggling to function as a group. At times, the only synergy left is the resolution not to let go of the stretcher. We are not. Worried. I'm worried if the stretcher is not moving. If you don't want to be here, bring the number. Let's go. Bring the number. Change me, change me. Change me. Run number. 
Come on, do it. Support. What now? With dusk now fast approaching, tempers flare up as the contributions of team members are being quantified. I'm changing, ex I'm changing everyone here. Now you think I'm a super C and I'm superhuman. I also get tired. Hey guys! Oh my God! I never saw these people in my life. Go, go, one for the. Go there. Hey man, change it, change it, change it, come round. Change it, change it, change it. What? Can you? It's not good. And then, as the sun slowly starts to set behind the distant little Karoo horizon, the men finally begin to function as a single entity, moving onwards and going through the motions of relieving one another without uttering a single word. The instructor, however, is not about to go quietly. Look tired. Look tired. Easy, stop this thing, bring it here, your number. Then finally, the finishing line is in sight. With their morale instantly boosted, the exhausted men break out in a song. They are the first group to arrive at the finishing line. <laughs> At long last, it's time for some shut-eye. When one's body and mind is this exhausted, any position will do. One after another, the other groups arrive at the finishing line. I've never been so like this before. Honestly, oh, sure. But I'm glad we're back. Yeah? I remember I smited it before I came, it was tough. Honestly, I thought it was pretty tough, yeah. I'm sure no one else can disagree. Bring it on. At last we are here. I suppose, yeah, bring it on. I didn't come this far to give up. Oh, yeah, it was hard, but at least we made it. And it is really worth it. Huh? That one, it was separating men from boys. Yes, I can't even do it. How do you train the easy fight? It's about it. At last, these soldiers have proven to themselves that pain is temporary, but pride is indeed forever. This first stretch of the quest for the Maroon Beret will never fade from their memories. They have conquered the forces that define a soldier on the battlefield, and they are sure to master those of the skies that await only the selected few who have earned the honor of wearing the famed Maroon Beret.